A very important subject. Uh, Mosha is in Salford. Good evening. What would you like to ask? Good evening. Um, I'm asking if now is the time that the UK leaves the ICC, or just compared today, Benjamin Netanyahu to the Hamas leaders, which is just like comparing Churchill and Roosevelt to Adolf Hitler. Well, the ICC's chief prosecutor, Karim Khan KC, who's British, has requested arrest warrants for Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defence Minister Yav Gallant, along with the Hamas leaders in Gaza, uh, Yahya Sinwar, its political leader Ismail Haniyeh, and military chief Mohammed Daif. Uh, these warrants would need to be approved by ICC judges for them to take effect. And if that were to happen, any country which is signed up to the ICC would be obliged to arrest any of these five men if they step onto their soil. The UK is part of the ICC, but the United States, Russia and China are all not signed up to its charter. And of course, President Biden today described this decision by the ICC as outrageous. Uh, Christian, let's come to you first. Well, I, I agree with Joe Biden, which is uh, uh, increasing rarity. Um, I think it was offensive nonsense um, to draw parallels between a, a democratic state that remains in a bloody fight against evil terrorists that provoked uh, conflict by murdering the largest number of Jews since the end of the Holocaust. Uh, you know, comparing them to the terrorists that perpetrated that horrific crime is totally wrong. Um, I, I don't understand why they've done it. It's completely discrediting. Um, and I'd also draw parallels with their attitude to the other nonsense that we saw in the geopolitical world stage today where we had our UN representative and all the others uh, standing for a minute silence to mourn the death of a uh, you know an evil president of Iran and I'm very glad that the uh, UK government took a solidly different approach to the European government that paid commiserations but I don't know what's going on with international diplomacy at the moment it seems they've all lost their heads somewhat. Gary? Um First of all, I visited Israel last year and I visited the West Bank. I was there uh, on the Mons team. I visited on holiday and uh, it was a fascinating visit. I, I came home a week before the terrible Hamas attack. Um, and I don't know about the legalities and the technicalities around the ICC, but I would say this. We should absolutely condemn what Hamas did. There is... Uh, what, what they the crimes they perpetrated against women, children and peaceful civilians is disgusting uh, what happened. But likewise, we also have to uh, recognise that the criticisms, the legitimate criticisms of the way the war is being prosecuted in Gaza. Thousands of innocent people have been killed uh, and I think there are very serious questions about the strategy of the Israeli state and we should not uh, but do you believe civilians have been targeted? Because, I mean, civilians always lose their lives in wars. So that's not to justify it, but it is just a fact that it that it does happen. Um, but the, the allegation here seems to be that Israel has deliberately targeted civilians. I d I've not seen the story, so I don't want to comment on the detail of the story. But I think the way in which Israel is prosecuting the war has been condemned and criticised by Biden and others in the uh, regime, in the uh, government in the States. Uh, it has been across the political spectrum, I think, now in the UK. And we need to recognise that the manner in which people are being killed in Gaza, the starvation of people in Gaza, and what is going on is doing huge damage uh, to Israel as well. And having visited Israel and the West Bank, what I'm very clear about, uh, is that if the Palestinian people are not afforded dignity, there is not going to be the peace that people across Israel and all the communities in Israel deserve. Tom Hunt. I think it was shocking um, what came out today. I mean, this, this ICC verdict, it wasn't just sort of being critical of the Israeli government. It wasn't saying that, oh, you know, we could have done this differently to have avoided the death of innocent lives. It, 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 it drew a direct equivalence between uh, the leaders of a democratic state who people might argue haven't done the best job in carrying out the you know response i mean they could they could point make lots of points there but an equivalence with a group of terrorists 
who have very, very deliberately targeted the most vulnerable uh, within a, within another country, with Israel, children, the elderly people, they brutalised and tortured and butchered. We've had dead b- babies and toddlers with their fingers cut off so they can be taken back as souvenirs. And I think to draw an equivalence between those two things, I think is shocking beyond belief. That isn't to say that I don't think that, you know, if people feel strongly that the, the Israeli government could be doing things differently, but it it, it is a war. Um, and unless you're a pacifist, one has to, one recognises that sometimes wars regret, regret, regretfully need to happen. I also think it's really important we get get the, the right data, you know, when it comes. I mean, any loss of life is utterly depressing and it's regretful. But at the moment, the number of times I've been hearing figures being branded out by MPs, and, and these are figures released by the Hamas-run health authority. Over the weekend, we had very different data coming out. And I'm not being glib, saying, oh, it was just this. It, it, it's, it's utterly depressing however many people die, innocent civilians. We need to get our facts right. And it does seem as though some people are holding Israel to a far higher standard than any other um, democracy. I was in Israel in January. I went to a kibbutz where this massacre happened. And I've been to the same kibbutz four years ago. And I found out that the teacher, the head teacher of the kibbutz, who I'd sat next to at lunch four years ago, was burnt alive in a house. And we saw, you know, so yeah. I guess for me, it, you know, if it, 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 it does, you know, that did shape my thinking, that visit, perhaps more but, than any other. Sh- shouldn't we hold democratic states to a higher uh, account than, than terrorist organisations? I mean, it's a reasonable thing to do, isn't it? Well, I, I, I think um, it seems often that Israel's being he- held to a higher standard than other democratic nations or other. Um, but ultimately, I think there's a world of difference between a... Um, so, you know, playing the devil's advocate, attacking the Israeli government because you feel as though they, 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 they haven't taken steps that could have minimised civilian deaths to a terrorist outfit who have deliberately got pleasure out of evil. It's certainly the closest to evil I've ever been, going to that commerce and seeing what I saw. And, and I, I just think it raises real questions about the ICC. Obviously, the US aren't a member of it. I agree with Christian. What President Biden said is absolutely bang on and I've been having concerns about President Biden going a bit you know not being supportive enough of Israel but then he said what he said today okay. Diana. well I want to preface this by saying that I absolutely condemn what Hamas did absolutely and I absolutely support that Israel has the right to defend itself however that has to be within international yeah. law and I also think that we see the International Criminal Court as an important cornerstone of the legal framework that, as a country, we respect and operate within. What's been, as I understand it, what's actually been called for is the arrest warrant. Yes. So this, we're not saying this is a conviction, we're not saying this is a verdict on anything. We are saying, or the, the International Criminal Court are, are saying, that they want to have these arrest warrants. They are independent and obviously they have to look at evidence and they have to form a view about whether that warrants uh, an arrest warrant being issued. So that's kind of my view about this. You will excuse me for saying that I've spent most of the day in the infected blood inquiry, so I'm not so over this, but I do think that... um, an arrest warrant is very different from actually the, the court fi- making a finding or convicting. 